imagine creating a document similar to this Wikipedia page about Peter Bruegel's painting Children's Game. You want to show the big picture and then you want to zoom in to different parts of the picture. How would you do that? You would probably copy paste the big image into your document and then you would take the same picture, paste it into an image editor and you would cut different parts of the picture and paste those into your chapters in the document. The issue with this approach is finding the pieces on the big picture. There is no reference between the two. You need to spend time to find where those pictures came from. I have a better way for you. With the new version of Obsidian Excolidraw, you can highlight a part of a picture, give it a name or a reference ID, and use that reference in your document to only include the relevant section of the picture in such a way that when you click this part of the image in the document, it will take you back to the big picture and show you where that part can be found. Let me show you how. We all love to have options, but too much choice can be overwhelming. Before diving into the details, I wanted to show you the different options you have for embedding a part of an image into a Markdown document. There are three ways to embed your images. First is the Markdown text embed, and this is how Excolidro worked until today. When you referenced a text element or a section, it simply embedded the relevant text content of that text element. Then you can embed a text area, which means that the text element and its surrounding area is embedded. And finally, you can embed an element group, which means that the group to which this element belongs will be embedded, but nothing else from the image is going to be embedded. You have two types of references. You have the block references and the section references. And finally, Excolidraw offers you two ways to embed drawings into your Markdown documents, SVG files or PNG files. SVG is the default, and some of the features that we are going to be talking about do not work with PNG files. So let's walk through a simple example. So let's look at this permanent note from my Zettelkasten as an example. I recorded this note as I was preparing the book on the page for how to take smart notes. And as you can see in the source, I'm referencing this idea, open tasks tend to occupy short-term memory. This is actually a reference to a text element on the drawing. If I control click on this, then indeed, the book on a page opens and I'm taken immediately to the text element and of course I can zoom out to see the whole picture. With the new feature in Excolid Draw, you can do two things. One, I can add area equals to this block reference and when I do that, this will include the part of the image that contained the referenced text element with a bit of a padding around it. Now, if instead of area, I include the keyword group, in that case, my block reference is going to transclude the block of which this text element is a part of. So if I click on this block now, it will first of all bring in the entire block and if I click here, you can see that this text element that I was referencing was part of a bigger group and that bigger group included the waiter. And this will remind me of the example that Zenke highlighted in the book. So this way, a block reference to a text element in your drawing can be displayed three different ways. You can use the group selector and then you will get all the elements from the group in which this text element is presented. You can use the area selector, in which case 
you will get a cut out of the document where this text element was shown. And finally, if you don't include any of these two keywords, then you will get the text element itself. So let's look at another example. In this example image, you can see the agenda on the left hand side. At the top, you can see that the agenda is a first level heading followed by the agenda points. The agenda is a single text element. The coloring is provided by two rectangles that are filled in and put in the background. And then here I have a big rectangle and a bit of an image to make this a complete drawing. Now I'm going to place all of these items into a group and let me show you the difference between the text reference, the area reference and the group reference. So let's pull this document here to the side and let me place here a reference to the agenda section. You can see that the agenda is transcluded it's a simple bullet point list of the agenda. Now, if I want to transclude the area around the agenda, in that case, I'm going to see the colors and a bit of white and a bit of black here from the bottom, but the padding is not that great. And also the text element here was much thinner than the colored line. So I get this cut out from the image. Now let's look at what the group reference would mean. So the group reference in this case brings in the entire image, but let me show you something interesting. Imagine that I have another object on this picture. For example, I might have a circle like this that is here in the corner of this group. Now, if I transclude the group because this is not part of the group, the group transclusion will not change. Let me just show you that it's actually there on the picture. If I remove the reference, then you can see that indeed my circle is visible in the corner. So let me show you one other thing. You can also create these links using the Obsidian menu in Xcolid Draw. So let's select this text element. Let's click the Obsidian menu and let's hover this button right here. This is the copy markdown link for selected element to clipboard button. And you have a couple of modifier keys. If you control click or command click on a Mac, then you will copy a group reference. If you shift click, then you will copy an area reference. And if you just simply click, then you're going to copy a normal block reference. So let's first copy a control click. And when I paste my link here, then you can see that this is a group reference. If I put the exclamation mark in front, then the group is transcluded. Now, if I come back and shift click on this icon, again, I'm not going to provide an alias. The link is now on the clipboard. If I place this link, you can see that this is an area reference. You can see the area right there. And if I put an exclamation mark in front, then you can see that this copied the area of the agenda. And finally, if I just simply click the button, it's going to copy a block reference. However, in this case, the result is going to be somewhat surprising. And let me explain to you why. In this case, only discussion was copied and not the entire text like up here. Then I only had the section reference. So you remember this was the section reference for the area. And here it is only the discussion. Why? To understand why you need to open the drawing in markdown mode. What you can see here is the underlying structure of the markdown document that XcoliDraw creates. And here at the top, I have the text elements section. And the first text element is the agenda with all the points. 
and it finishes with the block reference and this is the block reference we copied. But because this block reference is in a separate paragraph compared to the agenda and the content above, from Obsidian's perspective, this is not an entire block. That's why when I transcluded only this block reference, then only discussion was displayed. And when I transcluded the section agenda, then the entire agenda was displayed. Let's look at what happens when I switch from SVG embeds to PNG embeds. I can do the switch by going to the plugin settings, clicking on Excolitraw, and scrolling down to the embed and export section and clicking this button here that I do not want to transclude SVG. This means I'm going to be transcluding PNG images. Now, if I come back, let's test what happens. So the normal transclusion when I only transclude text works. When I transclude a group, that's also going to work. But when I transclude an area, then the entire image is transcluded. At first, in this case, you didn't see the difference, but because here I have this blob, you can see that the area selector is completely neglected by the transclusion. When you're working with PNG, the area option does not work. I want to show you a potential source of error or issue that you might face. If I copy the block reference for a non-text element, say for example, I copy the block reference for this rectangle and I paste it here into my document like this and I put an exclamation mark, Obsidian is going to throw an error because this block reference cannot be found. Everything is good. This block reference from Obsidian's perspective does not exist. However, if you write group in front of it, then the group will be transcluded. And if I switch back in settings to SVG mode, and I wonder if you can guess what's going to be the difference between the group and the area transclusion. You guessed it right the blob in the bottom corner will be visible because now I'm not transcluding the group of elements, but I'm transcluding with a bit of padding this area of the drawing. Finally, I want to share with you three little tricks I applied when I was working with the painting from Peter Bruegel in the intro. First of all, I changed the dimension of the image. Second, I logged it. And third, when I was done with the text elements, I changed their colors to transparent. Let's look at these one by one. I used the set dimensions Excolitraw script from the script library to change the dimension of the image. I took the size of the image from the Wikipedia page, but even if the Wikipedia page didn't have the size, I could have just simply calculated it based on the values that I see in the set dimension screen, or I could use File Explorer to look at the size of the image and calculate a size that I like. Why did I change the size of the image? Because when I add text elements on the image, or rather I add sticky notes, meaning rectangles with text in them, then the text needs to fit the box. So I want it to have a picture that is large enough that all my labels fit their boxes nicely. Second, I log the picture using the context menu. Why did I log the picture? Because as I add my sticky notes on top of the picture, I don't want to accidentally click the picture so it moves and all my sticky notes get out of place. Also, and this takes me to the third point, at the end when I was done with adding the sticky notes, I selected everything on my canvas and I changed the color to transparent. By locking 
the image. Then I do select all. The image is not selected. So changing these sticky notes, these labels from transparent to visible is easy. All I need to do is control A, select all, and I can change the color, the stroke color from transparent to black and back. And finally, finally, if you don't have the stroke color transparent, you can just simply type transparent in the edit box next to the stroke color. And also you can check out my video about the custom color palette that you can create for yourself. I am very excited about this new feature in Obsidian X Color Draw. I really hope that you like it as well and this will take your ability to link your images to your notes to the next level. Thank you.